morning people early start today just gone 6 a.m this is going to be our final wainwright bagging route the scarfell group four wainwrights around eight mile 1300 ascent and seven to eight hours so as you can see we've just started in wasdale we're actually parked by ritson's bar and this is going to be our final route and our last four wainwrights So we decided to camp over last night to try and beat the crowds today. Weather's meant to be great all day. Scarfell, Pike is a bit cloudy at the moment, but it's gonna clear. But with it being a Saturday, it's gonna be busy. So we decided to jump up early in the dark. Just got ready as quick as and straight onto the trail. It's not a long group this by the looks of it. And I've already done Scarfell Pike a few times in the past. So obviously no that one. So there's only three Wainwrights we haven't done. We're actually going to finish on Slight Tard. A few people have asked me in the past, what are we going to finish on? But there was no plan behind it. It's just fell the way it has. But yeah, anyway, looks like it's going to be a good day. Steady climb up to the first one, Lingmel, around 800 metres before hitting Scarfell Pike. So as you can see, the path up to Lingmel, grassy one and steep man. Normally, people up park here, the Scarfell Pike car park, and come up this way. But we joined from Ritson's over this way and joined onto the bottom. This is a steep start. This to this Lingmel, woke me right up this. But um, we do join onto Scarfell Pike later on. Clouds just lingering now. That's the only problem. can see how much the clouds come in over towards you barrow there mm -hmm. but about halfway up and now that's going to be another hill over the top of there not feeling too bad actually i think because we haven't drove up here this morning it's near on three hours drive so it's a lot easier when you can have your breakfast at the car and that feel a lot more energized but decent little route so far Bit of a cloud inversion here. Scarfell Pike and Scarfell clear, and so was our one. Just come through that little rocky section here, a bit of scrambling, and onto like a staircase now. But still got to go a couple of hundred metres over the top of here. So you can just see the bottom of the valley there, where the car's parked. It's been quite steady this ascent. Hasn't been that bad in my own opinion. Not as bad as Kirkfell yesterday. You can just see Kirkfell there. We ascended that yesterday in the most I lost you. That was grim, man. You can just see here in the middle of Spectre. It's like a circle of light. It looks like a bit like a rainbow from the sun and the clouds. Boss, that. What a start to the day. Well worth getting up early. Sun's only just come up as well, like high. Looks empty up towards Scarfell Pike as well. Can't see no one up there. How good does that look? Unreal. I cannot believe how clear it is up here either. So Lingmel Summit's just up there at the top and Scarfell Pike there, there's the path up from Wasdale. Nice and straightforward that, but I'm assuming we're coming off the back end and shooting over somewhere. Must be a path. Oh, all them views.
Ling Mel, 807 metres. What a sick mountain this is, oh my god. Belter. That is mad, mate. What a start to the day. You can just see our way off up the Scarfell Pike. Nice and easy, that. Fairly straightforward one. Just noticed then we've seen this fella, is it Trev? Yeah, man. Seen him loads of times on top of fells <laughs> on other videos. Always about him. Don't even want to go over to Scarfell Pike. This is absolutely insane, this mountain. Cannot believe them. Gullies over the side. So we've previously done Scarfell Pike from this side, I think. Goes down to Seatway, it's called the Corridor Route, it's decent that. And it's obviously quicker to drive to, to Seatway. But that is mad down there. Belter. Boss start of the day. So you drop down about no more than 100 metres before you join this path up to Scarfell Pike. Probably got 200 metres up. But I've been up this a few times, quite easy to steady going. Should be up there no longer than like half an hour, 40 minutes. Not too far off the summer. Easy path this. Summit's just come into view. A few more minutes and we'll be up there. Nine seven seven, nine seven eight. Pike, 978 meters. So this is the official summit, and that's obviously a bit lower at 977. Second one of the day. Dead me for a Saturday. Smashed it. Absolutely flying here. So we're currently on two and a half hours. Just decent timing, considering we've ascended Lingmel as well. Two down, two to go. Got to get up here, Tom. We'll have a summer today. <laughs> There's a couple of shelters up here. So we're going over there now, but we're going up via Fox's Reich rather than Lord's Reich because it's sketchy up to Scarfell. But what a day for it, man. Unreal. Literally can't hear a thing, yeah. So, ahead of us, you can go up Lord's Reich, which a lot of people like going up. You've got Broad Stands here, which is a climber's route. You can see there's a few climbers there, and then we're going to go up Fox's Tarn. Dom doesn't fancy Lord's Reich, so we're just going to go up the safer route. But I would probably like to come back and try that one time. Rescue post. Yeah, it's 
two climbers getting ready there. So just looking on the GPS, just next to the rescue post, the path goes up there where the red screen is and goes down. And the GPS is actually going to Fox's Town as well and telling us to go down and then they send back up around the rocks. And Don was saying that a lot of people try and send broad stands by accident. And I can see why, because you could get confused and think going direct. But you can see that as a climber's route, obviously they're roped up. So we're going to head down and then it looks like the path swings up around the rocks up to the summit. But uh, we're going to have to descend a touch. You can see this descent down is a bit sketchy like. But um, we're sliding a bit. Yeah, that fella's absolutely smashing the climbing there. It's sick. So you can see how much we've ascended. Them climbers are just here, out of view, and Lord Drake. And it looks as if we're coming up here somewhere. Not, not entirely sure, but it looks like it could be one of these little things. I think it is that. You think it's that? Yeah. And because it makes sense, doesn't it? At the top of it, and I think that's mm. the yeah, it looks like it could be. Yeah, but we're over here somewhere anyway. So you can just see the path up to here. Just next to the stream. This is the path here and it shoots up. Past the waterfall basically. Right right next to it. And you can see the medical box up there that we passed earlier on. So you do drop down a bit. We've got to descend through this water or next to it. But it looks uh, fairly safe to be honest. So this is quite straightforward this. Just gotta be careful of the moss, it's quite slippy. But you can see it just comes out over the top. Not sure what's past that point like. But yeah, it's decent. Tell you what, I thought I was missing out not going off Lord Drake, but this is proper good. Like, really fun. But, eh, uh, not that sketchy, but it's got a bit to it, but it's it's decent, innit? I thought it was going to be good to the bar, Lord Drake, but you can always come back and this was worth coming up. Not far off the top, though. And um, we've just seen a climber. Oh, there he is, the bottom, he's come down this side. Ah, uh, so I've just noticed on the GPS that there is actually a path. This is the path here where the climbers just walk past us. But we'd seen on the internet that people climbed through the waterfall part. So we did all, but I'd say go to the waterfall because it's well more fun. It's actually got us up there fairly easy and it looks like it's flattening out. Obviously we've got a bit more ascent, but sweet that man. Good way up. But yeah, you can come up the path down here or just go that way. But I'd, I'd say that way because it's well better. Or Lord's Rake, whatever you fancy. Yeah man, sick. So here's Fox's tan. <laughs> For some reason I expect it to be a bit bigger than that. Like Fox's puddle more like. <sighs> um, we are heading up there towards a different summit called Simmons Knot and then Scarfell's up here somewhere. Bit of a slog up this scree field path here. <sighs> so Simmons Knot Summit's there. You can see Scarfell Pike. Just in the back, loads of people on it now, but you can just turn off here over to Scarfell here somewhere. You don't have to go up to that if you don't want to. Yeah, that's like basically our final ascent there. There's some of this, and then onto our last wing, right? Slight tad, which is lower, so it's going to be dropping down. But that was tough coming up there from when we hit the time, man. Stupidly, both got sunburn from yesterday's walk, so trying to not get it again. Probably cool down in a second because it's quite uh, windy up here. You feel the wind picking up, but yeah, it's tough a little ascent that, but good. It's 
Scar fell 964 meters, second to last Wayne Wright. Wayne Wright, I mentioned, that had a shelter on top of it. You can just see wash water down there, over to Will Gillard and that. Views up here, man, fantastic. I've heard, I've heard a few people tell me that Scarfell is one of the best mountains, and yeah, I agree. Even this walk for me has been boss. Dead up at end of a bar, having Scarfell Pike on it. Cause I've done it a couple of times. Cause we got up early and it was quite dead. It's been fantastic, man. But one more to go anyway. 213 rain nights, and you know what? Probably couldn't have picked a better day for it. I love like the clouds and versions. Sick. And just see a little shelter up here. Can you see them? Decent that, isn't it? And we're heading in that direction to the last one. I've just read in the Wayne Wright book that there's a cairn up here. Still saying that's the highest point, like. I'd still say that other part's higher, like. Definitely, unless he means like a cairn, but it's not the ice point, you know what I mean? So there's a cairn on Scarfell, but he did mention that in the book then. You can see that other part tire at the back. But if you like your cairns, there's something anyway. And our last one's in the back somewhere. It could be this in front. Not too sure. So there's a high possibility we might get stuck in a cloud in our last one here. I'm hoping not. <laughs> it might just be deceiving, but you can see that cloud sneaking in on our way over. It doesn't even look like anyone's over there. Everyone seems to be coming up either Scarfell or Scarfell Pike. Actually, not that many on Scarfell Pike, but it is still in the early. Yeah, it's only like 10 o'clock or something. Some views up here. Just hoping that goes now. Play into the cloud gods, man. As we're getting closer, it's sort of disappearing. I love a view up there, man, please. <sighs> Nearly there. Wayne Wright said there was a little scramble up here. Short one. Must be here somewhere. Ah, it's gotta be this. Gotta be, there's only one thing higher than everything else. Oh, it's sick, man. It's about to finish. It's right. Slight start. 762 meters, last rain night. 214, boxed mate, sick. Oh man. <sighs> Cannot complain about this one. Get on, Dom. Oh, it ends in disaster. <sighs> Can't complain, like, can you? Delta. Smashed it. <laughs> you haven't touched the summit. This is right, lad. I'm a bit like gutted here that I finished, but good way to end it. Can't not complain here. Yeah. Good, apart from the <laughs> apart from the cloud coming in. Nah, but that's a that's a good one to end on, man. What? It, know what? We were just saying then. What a route this has been. Woo! <laughs> it's right, lad. You soak now? Yeah, I'm wearing it. <laughs> Do you want to wear it? <laughs> Cheers, people. Nice warm rain, right? <laughs> <laughs>
little warm Wayne night for the finish, yeah? Cheers, Wayne, right? Anyone who sub to my channel or watched that half of these boring videos, you, you just want a medal for that, mate. But on to bigger things from here, mate. This has been sick. Being boss, being well worth it, all the hours we've put in and just driving up here, mate, every weekend or whatever. It took about three years, actually, but it's been sick. And do you know what? Look at it. What a way to end it. Tell you what you don't do, drink a bottle of wine, right? On an empty stomach. Feel half cut, mate, already. But um, we're gonna head down to uh, where we're parked at Ritson's and have, have a beer, like. Obviously I'm driving, so I'll, I'll celebrate a bit more tonight when I get home. Belter, buzzing. Belter ends of the day and look at the clouds gone, mate. Absolutely sick. But it's been a good one. And this has been one of the best routes by far for me. Just noticed this then. What am I this? Like plane parts or something? Alright. Oh, Didn't even know this was here. Oh, there's loads. It's 1941. RAF Unsworth. Training Corps. What? Oh, yeah, it's scattered everywhere. Tell you what, I did not know this was here. Well, I haven't even read the book that much, but. Something to look at. So weirdly, the route, if I'm looking at the maps and um, the OS, you theoretically have to go back up to Scarfell and down there, but the guy, GPX file, is just saying cut across the grass and you lead to a path later on, so you descend. But don't get me wrong, it does look, it looks fine to get down there. It's not bad terrain, but it's weird the way you pass this, and I didn't even know nothing about this. But anyway, yeah, we're going to follow his lead and then see where it takes us. Looks okay, though. The classic Stuart Marshall as well. So we've done every one of his routes. And just to finish it off on the last one, he's got us flying down the sides of uh, mountains here. It's like non-existent path. But I've looked on the GPS and there's nothing even going towards where we need to be. And he's just got you walking through a path that goes up to Scarfell. And then... He's got you jumping rivers and that again. They are Stuart Marshall classic. I'm happy to just do it for one more time. Won't be doing no Stuart Marshalls again now. Marshall had us pickled anyway, so we may as well have a go ourselves and see what we can find. But this other path, like a legit one, is not too far away in the GPS. I think we can make it over across this grass. And then hopefully back to the car and for the for the beer. So we've actually jumped onto a legit path now. You can see the Wasdale National Trust car park at the bottom there, and we're parked at Ritson's down there. You can see it's full, and loads of people coming up and down Scarfell there. This looks a bit sketchy, like, but it'll get us there. So you can see this path's quite steep. Just zigzaggy and scree, but it does come out at the bottom and then you end up in the car park. Then we just have to walk back down the road to the car, but it's getting us back. Nice one, stupid Marshall. <laughs> So we're nearly at the bottom of this so-called path. There's bits that look like a path, but to be honest, I'd advise maybe going back to the town and round. That is not good. I slipped then, put a bit of an hole in my hand. It's not really a good way off. We were trying to get down quick and said this is a path, but not great. I'll show you on the summary that is a path like listed, but I wouldn't advise it. Maybe go back towards the town. It's just slip, both of us slipping everywhere. I've cut my hands open, Dom's went on an arse a few times, but uh we're nearly at the river and then at the car park, so just gonna crack on through this little field. So yeah, you can see there's a bit of a path here and a style to get back down to the bottom. So people must have used this at some point, but I just wouldn't do it. We were even worrying about getting over this fence then, but obviously this is here which helps.
finally back on some flat grounds. Yeah. Had a scarf all car park. Post 214 pint here. <laughs> Right people, the Scarfell group, let's get to it. So the parking for this one, fairly simple. You've basically got two choices here. As you can see where I parked, and there's another car park further down. So I parked at this car park, the Wasdale Head Car Park for Scarfell Pike, it says on Google. I call it Ritson's Bar as the pub at the end of the road. As you can see, Ritson's Bar there, or they call it the Wasdale Head Inn. It's got a campsite next to it as well. So just here, this is used as a campsite, and it's only like five quid a night, so it's fairly cheap. You can see there. And you're straight up to Scarfell Pike from there, so it's handy if you don't want to drive the next day and you want to camp over. And obviously, you've got the pub on the doorstep, and just there, there's shops and there's a toilet and shower at the back of Ritson's Bar, so it's ideal. So you can see there where there is tents normally. And here's the main car park. So massive car park. What I'd say is try and get there as early as possible if you're going to go. Price wise, when I was there I had a little look around for a box to put money in. Couldn't see anything and there was no signs to say about parking prices. So I'm not too sure, there might have been a box somewhere and I'm assuming it's probably an um, honesty box or something but I didn't come across it, maybe there was cars parked in the way. Uh, so maybe this has got something to do with it but that wasn't there when I was there the other week. I didn't end up paying but I ended up drinking in the pub anyway afterwards so they end up making money either way. What I would say about this car park, so when I finished the route this wasn't too full in the morning. And obviously you can see where sort of the designated spaces are. What a lot of people have done on this side here and all the way around the road. They parked the cars on the sides and as I was trying to get out, it was dead narrow. It was causing a bit of an obstruction. Not majorly, but enough for the traffic warden to turn up. And um, he finds literally must have been 100 cars. Obviously the people who parked in the like designated bit were fine. Yeah, he made some money that day and... I don't, I'm not sure what a fine is nowadays, maybe about 80 quid. But it's not something you really want after going on a walk. So just bear that in mind and just make sure you try and get there a bit earlier and beat the crowds. And the other car park, fairly simple. You've actually got to drive past it to the one I parked in over this bridge. Next to the Wasdale National Trust campsite, the main car park for Scarfell Pike. So Wasdale Head Car Park again. But this is run by the National Trust. And you can see here, it's got a few facilities, sell stuff. You can buy water and ice creams and stuff like that. It also has good toilets. But the thing with this car park is it's £9 per day nowadays. Obviously, if you're going up Scarfell Pike on its own, you could probably get up there and no more than four hours up and down. And it's a bit cheaper, but if you're doing this route in particular, it's going to take you a long time, so you need a full day. Obviously, if you've got a National Trust membership, it's included, so you won't have to pay. But I personally don't have one, so that's why I picked Ritson's Bar to park at. I ended up coming through this car park and used the toilets. And they had a sign outside saying it was full. So then everyone was going up towards Ritson's. But then that's why everyone was parked on the side, because there was no space left. And then obviously that's when they ended up getting fined. So always just try and get there as early as possible if you can. But yeah, two nice and simple options for you there. And here's my route. So you can see the car park marked here and the car park marked there. And the route was originally saying start here and cut up this path and join on to where I've gone. But I probably added about 10 minutes onto the walk. So yeah, starting in Ritson's Bar and you cross a river, which was actually dried out for some reason, even though it's not even summer yet. And we ended up joining onto this path, which we would have went on to anyway, up to the first one, which was Lingmel. Steady walk going up there. You would have seen on the video, the views got a Lingmouth. 
unreal mate i might put that in my top five wayne nights to be honest absolutely fantastic the cloud inversions made it even better like i'm not gonna lie like that was amazing but like i loved the way you would have seen where I would, there was sort of like drops and bits of gullies off the side gives you the boss perspective in my opinion and yeah really good fell love that ling mill but as i say nice and steady going up there before you come off up to scarfell pike ling mills in 800 meters so once you come off there you drop down no more than like 50 100 meters and you get onto the main path up to scarfell pike that everyone takes which is this one here the green one you've got to go up about 200 meters from this middle section here but nice and steady again good little path up to scarfell pike with it being england's highest mountain and one of the top three most popular and as i say scarfell pike been up there a few times in the past good mountain and what i did like about it so when i'd done the three peaks challenge in the past and then i'd been on there a few times around midday obviously because it's highest mountain in england always rammed with people and uh, not very enjoyable if i'm honest but because we summited it around 7 a.m it was great there was three people up there and it, oh, honestly it was just it's like night and day the difference i absolutely loved it up there when it was empty don't judge it on how many people are there but some people like all that i do like it when it's quiet if i'm honest i did mention on the video that the summit cairn is actually 977 but it's like the i call it the crown that's the actual highest part of the summit obviously make sure you get on top of there and get yourself a little photo coming off scarfell pike over towards scarfell so you would have seen we got to a medical box and this was around this point and i didn't realize the time but that red path was actually micheldor I didn't mention on the video at the time and that leads on to broad stand and you can go up to lord's rake and as you can see lord's rake's on the right after broad stand i got a bit confused because i'd never been there before and thought it was elsewhere but what i seen in front of me was broad stand which the climbers were going up a few people have got stuck on that in the past on broad stand if you're not familiar with it or not looking at a gps it looks like it's climbable but there's been a few rescues on there before obviously lord's rake meant to be really good and i will tackle that in the future but obviously dom didn't fancy it so we ended up doing fox's rake instead you can see on the other map here's a different view of it you got micheldor there broad stand where you would have seen the climbers going up and there's a bit of a gully and then you have lord's rake here and you can see the way up to fox's town so you basically descend from the medical box and you do drop down quite a bit and you come round the side of broad stands up fox's rake and basically you can see there is a path running next to the waterfall we basically went through the middle of this waterfall or stream whatever it is and we seen a climber coming down with all his stuff on and um, he ends up taking a path to the right of us but we climb through the center of it and it's definitely worth doing and it's a good bit of fun if i'm honest actually really enjoyed it I sort of wasn't disappointed that I didn't go up Lord's right then because that I enjoyed that so much. And then you come up to the tarn, which is absolutely tiny. Didn't even feel like a tarn, like your usual ones. Got a bit of a steep climb up here towards Scarfell Summer. And then you've got Simmons Knot here, which is obviously slightly lower than Scarfell. If you want, you can go up to Summit that, but I didn't bother. And then Scarfell Summer here. And again, another great mountain didn't disappoint heard a few good things about scarfell and yeah it's really really good and it had a summer shelter up there as well and wayne right to mention that but it did have another cane further down but i don't think that was the summit the summit was the part like a big rock way and people have put stones on there you've got a nice and steady one down to your last wayne right slight sad nice and straightforward path and you descend a couple of hundred meters and as you would have seen, my final Wainwright 214. I'm actually glad I finished on Slight Tide. There was absolutely no planner with these Wainwrights. And it just fell on that route last, as it was probably more the fact that because it was the furthest drive away from where I live, we never ever got round to doing those two last routes to last. Yeah, I was very pleased. And, you know, the weather couldn't have been any better. Just had some great views around it. And I was sort of happy it was quiet as well. 
had myself a weighing night on the summit, as you would have seen, and Dom had the little bottle of champagne, but you know what, it was a great way to end it. Pretty happy with the choice. Didn't have a clue what to expect when I got there, but really good summit. And as I'd mentioned, the Stuart Marshall special. So in hindsight, if I was to do that route again, which I probably never will, as I went back up to Scarfell on the main path and down here, but the Marshall route had us cutting across the grass. After we seen the RAF plane parts, which is just below the summit here, we started the descent down. It's fairly safe actually down that area getting down, but what I'd suggest is maybe get to the main path, descend down to the town, and then use the main path round back to the car park. We had to cross a bit of a river, and you would have seen here, the Ordnance Survey isn't listing the path that I could see, but Outdoor Active here listed a path going down. Very steep and just scree. And every time you'd walk, the scree would slide. And to be honest, it was a bad decision. Shouldn't have took that way. But once it was so far in, I couldn't really go back. But again, yeah, you could easily have went down a town there and just swing back on yourself up to the top. I fell over, put a bit of an hole in my hands. And then Dom fell over a good few times, slipped. And to be honest, it, it could have been a lot worse, but it turned out all right in the end. Before we headed over a bit of a field here, before we ended up in the main car park for Scarfell Pike, the National Trust one. Got a quick water break before heading down the road back to the car. And as you would have seen, grabbed myself a pint in the pub after the walk as a little celebration. So let's have a quick look at the stats. You can see on the elevation here, Nice and steady going walk. You can see there the highest point, Scarfell Pike, up there in two and a half hours, which wasn't bad if, in, in my own opinion. Fairly straightforward walk apart from the end bit. Do you know what? It's probably one of my favourite routes, but I'd maybe alter the ends next time and suggest that if you're going to do it yourself. And it ends up being 9.1 mile. And as you can see there, I set off at 5.46 and ended at 1.16. For me, that was the best idea, as it was a Saturday and it was boiling. I knew it would be chocker. As we were descending the final part, you could see a train of people going up to Scarfell Pike. And then obviously, all the cars were getting ticketed and that was at one o'clock. You want to try and get up there as early as possible. And in the end, the moving time was four hours 51. And then the final time was seven hours 30. And obviously, we chilled on our final Wayne ride for a bit. And then had a few breaks. So it's not a very long route, if I'm honest. We've added a good hour and a half on there. Can be done in about five and a half hours if you really want to. But really good route. So that's that, people, with the 214 Wainwrights all in the bag. I think I bagged my first Wainwright about 15 years ago when I was about 17. We started the Stuart Marshall route. I think it was around two and a half years ago. So it's been slow progress, but obviously living in Liverpool and having time and stuff at work and weather and all stuff like that. It's been a journey, I'll tell you that. Do you know what? If you're watching any of these videos, I can highly recommend it. You know, I've took a lot out of that personally, and especially even Dom. I remember when we first started, and she was scared to go up a lot of stuff. The fear factor settled down a lot. But yeah, that's it. I might revisit a few routes, maybe film them. I'm not sure, because if you'd seen me earlier videos, I wasn't really going in-depth about them until the later ones and uh, i know a lot of people appreciate the parking and you know me going through the route and stuff like that but let me know what you want to see on the channel although i've loved doing the way night videoing them's been a bit of a pain sometimes obviously you're on long routes and you're trying to get around as quick as possible i like to try and improve the quality of the channel please let me know in the comments what type of stuff you want to see i'm leaning towards maybe wild camping and stuff like that and then i'm looking at doing some things abroad um, in the near future and please leave a thumbs up for this and leave a comment because obviously it helps me with the algorithm and as always people everything could be linked in the description below and i'll see you in the next one take it easy